Hi all, in this video we are going to see about PVST. Let's get into the video. What is the PVST? It is a per wheel and spanning tree protocol. Uh, what does it do? Uh, it is a default VLAN in Cisco devices. Uh, we just see about a normal spanning tree protocol. What's the difference between PVST and a normal spanning tree protocol is the normal spanning tree protocol um, does the process based on the switches. That is, it uh, takes care of the entire config. Um, it just takes care of uh, who will become the root switch and how to uh, um, who will become the root port and how to transmit the data. That's what it just thinks about the entire configuration based on the switch. But in the per wheel and spanning tree protocol, the configuration first that is the configuration and the running process. That is how does it works. It's based on the wheel and basis, not based on the switches. So why is it being used for? Suppose uh, you are having a network with a gigabit port. Consider three switches. Yes. Yeah. Consider this um, sample example over here. Suppose if you are having a gigabit switch over here, this interface. This this has been a gigabit interface, and uh, this is this has the switch one has become a root bridge. Then all the switches need to go via um, in order to reach this switch. The shortest path will be considered to be as a root port. So automatically the switch to this port. And switch three, this port will become a root port. Then, what about the stages of this two interface? It will just check this MAC ID, and uh, um, if this MAC ID is lower and this MAC ID is higher, automatically the switch two will become the uh, root bridge. So, uh, switch uh, switch two's uh, interface will become the designated port. Automatically, this will become an alternate port. So, what what is the use of having this gigabit interface? Then the higher there is a high cost and a high bandwidth interface will become into the alternate port and not using it was it's just a waste of cost and a waste of bandwidth. What is the use of that? In order to overcome the 20 per wheel and spanning protocol is being introduced. Suppose um, take this example. You can see the VLAN 10 is being configured on switch 2 and switch 3, but the VLAN 20 is being configured on switch 1, switch 2, and switch 3. So what does it take care of this? Um, the VLAN 10, there is a bridge ID will be considered for two switches. There is a root bridge will be the two switches for VLAN 10, one root bridge, and VLAN 20, another root bridge. So the VLAN 10 root bridge might be switch 2, and VLAN 20 root bridge might be any of the switches. So, what does this offer? This interface may be a blocked port for uh, VLAN 20, but it may be a uh, designated or a root port for VLAN uh, 10. So, um, the interface might not always be in the alternate port. It can transmit some data, so it might be useful uh, in order to um, using of this interface. This might uh, this interface will be in a usable mode, not only the alternate mode, but also it may be in usable for transmitting of data for whatever be the process. So the per VLAN spanning tree protocol helps in such a way. This is the difference between VLAN and per VLAN. This is default on Cisco devices. Uh, it takes care of only in the basis of VLAN. Uh, basis root uh, root bridge and the bridge ID process will be based on the VLAN only. That's it about uh, per VLAN spanning tree protocol. If you haven't seen about a normal spanning tree protocol, the link is given in the description. Just check it out. That's it. Thanks for watching. Until next time.